but um, but so you, you lost your wallet, you're freaking out. You're like, oh my god, I just gave somebody a story kit for uh, stealing my identity. They could become Stacy and, and open up a, a credit uh, account in my name. Or they could... A, the crazy thought that went through my head was that somebody could even sell my identity. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's a market for American identity yeah. in Mexico oh, if yeah. all this other stuff is going on. So... Tell me, tell me a story. So, so, so you you thought it was gone. You, you came back from Tim's uh, dental appointment. You, you you realized you didn't have your wallet. We started to head back to the states. Did you turn white? Did like the blood leave your face, and you're like, just did you just get this feeling of terror or something, or what happened? I was mad at myself for losing my personal items more than anything else, and um, you know. It was just like, I think I would have reacted the same way if I was in the States. Because anybody could find that and do anything with it. Just because I lost it in Mexico doesn't mean that a Mexican is going to find it. I was there. I'm not Mexican. You know what I mean? So, I'm infuriated. And I'm like, whatever, we're going home right now. Going home. They're gonna let me in, you know. I wasn't worried about getting through the border. Yeah, you're American. You're obviously American. Yeah. You'll be able to talk way back in. And um, and they believe your story anyways. Yeah. So as we're waiting in line to to for Exodus, I guess whatever you want to call it, Border Patrol. <clears throat> there, I noticed a little ticket on my windshield, and I was like, You were already in line. People on each side, you people in front of you, people behind you. You were heading towards the border now. Yes. Oh wow. Okay. Like we're like bumper to bumper inching traffic. Oh yeah. And I throw my hands up in the air and I say, "You would think that parking ticket was a note from somebody saying they found it." <laughs> and then I looked real close and I was like, "There's handwriting on it." And it jumped out and I grabbed it and I can't read Spanish at all. I, from me. I just moved here. I cannot speak any Spanish. And you're you're a, you're a country. You're a girl from a little village in Maine. Yeah. Never took Spanish. Yeah. And um, like I could pick up French better than Spanish. So it, basically, I read the equivalency of passport on it, and I know what it means. Passport Yeah. Exactly. You saw that. And you knew immediately. This was a note from somebody who found my wallet, my passport. Exactly. So we cut across traffic, because there was like... We were having a honk honk go, hey, move on, let me out. Yeah, it took forever. Everyone was freaking out. Um, we cut across traffic, though, because when you go to leave, all these Mexican vendors are trying to sell you stuff yeah, as yeah. you're waiting in line. So one of them spoke English fairly well, and he was like, you tell those cops over there what just happened, and they'll let you go down the ramp to go back downtown instead of having to wait through the line and then go through the border and then come back down, you know? That so which some, would have been ridiculous. Some Mexican policemen help you get into the right lane to get back downtown. Exactly. So first a vendor helped me get to the police, and then the police helped me get in to like the, the lane that I needed to be in. I had to like back up down this little like service area. After that... What was the vendor selling? Was he selling Mexican blankets? Was he selling... Well, he's it was selling food and drinks. Okay. Those, those serapes are killer. It's like... We gave him five some money. For, Oh, cool. And, and then, um... Then... We went back downtown. We have no idea where we are. The only map I have is on my, my iPhone. But when you're in Mexico... You can't access the internet, so oh. I no longer had access to my map. So we couldn't even figure out how to get back to the mall that I lost my passport at. So I just drove around and I found this big swanky hotel. It was like, whatever, pulled in, stopped there, and went inside. And we explained to the guy at the desk what had happened, pretty much because we needed to use a phone 
in Mexico. Like we couldn't figure out how to make my phone call the number of the, the lady left on the note. Huh. So we went into a hotel to use their phone. The you remember guy, which hotel? No. I could probably, no, actually, I have no idea. Kim couldn't either, but he said it might have, might have been an American hotel, because it was a really nice one. It was definitely American, because I had internet signal in there. Okay. All and, right. um, the guy at the lobby desk was incredibly helpful. Called the lady, talked to her, in case she didn't speak English, and, um, hung up and he was like, she's going to be here in like an hour. She's going to bring it to you. Huh. And I was floored. You're about to freak out again. Yeah, I, I thought I was going to have joy to this time. drive through a city I didn't know to find something where I had no idea where it was. And that, I was just so frustrated at that point for the clerk at the lobby desk to be like, She's coming to you was like, <laughs> such a weightless lift it off. Really? Were you like celebrating at this point? Or were you still a little suspicious? No, I was not suspicious at all. So we wait. I got a drink of wine from the bar. And Tim got a coffee. And then. How did you have money if uh, you lost your wallet? Was it Tim's I didn't money lose my point? wallet. I lost my passport. Ah, okay. Which had my social security card and my birth certificate inside of it. Freak out, okay. So, it was literally identification papers. Uh-huh. And, um, so the lady shows up way under an hour, gets there almost immediately, it felt, and she's super nice and super polite and well-spoken and speaks English more properly than most Americans do. And um, we offered her 200 pesos for bringing it over, you know, at least for gas money and it's like a courtesy tip, but she absolutely refused the money. We argued over <laughs> taking the money for like five minutes and then I, I just gave her a hug. I was like, saying my ass, like big time. Nice. And even when we went to a restaurant... She's a local, a, a local yeah. Mexican lady. Even when we went to a restaurant, the waitress and the person that pumped my gas were just, like, commonly polite and friendly. Were, were anybody remarking that, you know, because they, they have, this is documented, they have been suffering a big decrease in Mexican tourism since all this stuff's been happening. Did anybody thank you for being there? Did anybody act really grateful or unusually happy, maybe, that you were an American in Tijuana, partying, spending money, doing anything? No. No? You didn't notice anything special? No, and I wouldn't... I mean, maybe they seem so friendly because, you know, we were obviously American. And they were like, well, I'll get a better tip if I'm nice. But people in America do that, too. Everybody does that. Yeah. Everybody does something to get things out of other people. Well, that's what a Your tip is for. Your waitress smiles at you, so you'll tip her more. That's what a tip is for. The word tip, I found out the other day, is to ensure promptness. And that's like for speedier service. If someone's going to work hard to get your, your bags to your room or something, and, and you obviously see they're trying. That's what the tip is for. But um, down there, I got a mouthful of food. I'm on national TV. There is so much less bullshit to it. I don't know how. I really don't. But I feel like I'm pretty intuitive to people. And if somebody is being fake easy to pick up on. And I didn't get that from these people. I thought that they generally... No, you're right. They actually appreciated it. Yeah, there's a... There